myself last week in chapel, but in case you missed that, my name is Marissa and I'm serving as your student government president this year. Um, I know a lot of you, I recently met some of you, and some of you I do, I do not have a relationship with yet. Uh, but I don't want that to be the case. Uh, I truly mean it when I say that I want to know and meet every single one of you. Uh, I want to know your story and I want you to feel comfortable around me as well. Uh, when I was a freshman and I sat in the bleachers uh, right up there in that corner, I remember my second week coming to chapel and listening to the student government that year speak, or student government president that year speak. Uh, for some reason, I was so in intimidated and insecure by that. Uh, it wasn't anything that he did, but it was just uh, on myself. Uh, I couldn't imagine going up to him and having a conversation with him, much less trying out for student government or anything like that. I literally made it a point that day to go around to all my friends and tell them that my only goal for my four years here was to never, ever speak at chapel. I would, every time, I would say no, no matter what. That was my goal. Um, like, I didn't even try out for student government my freshman year because I knew that I might have to come up here and say why I wanted to be in it. Uh, and so here I am, two years later, speaking in chapel, willingly. <laughs> And uh, I'm not saying any of that to intimidate you or make you feel like because I was intimidated, you should be too. Uh, actually, the opposite. I just want to let you know that if for any reason you do feel intimidated by me or any of the student government officers you see up here throughout this year, uh, please do not feel that way. Uh, we're just normal college students who still get nervous about coming up here in front of you. Um, and we just care about you and want to make a difference. So today you're going to hear from me, but really this is on behalf of all of student government. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what being in student government entails, about our exact plans for the year, how all of our offices work. Uh, rather, I'm just going to talk about some of our visions and goals for the student body of this year. Um, and you'll hear more about the details and the officers, all that kind of stuff in a couple of weeks. But for today, I just want you to know that we are here for you and with you. We are doing the York College experience right by your side. Um, today you're going to hear me say you and we a lot, but really when it comes down to it, um, there really is no we and you. It's just all of us doing this together. Uh, so I want to tell you about three of our big visions and plans that we have for the student body this year that we need your help with. Um, these are something that not just I came up with, but these are something your classmates, your teammates who are serving as officers this year have been thinking about, praying about, and working on since last spring. We want to grow with you this year uh, in leadership, service, and in community. Uh, so first up, growing in leadership. I want to talk a little bit about the idea that leadership equals influence. Um, and everyone has influence somewhere, so therefore everybody is a leader in some way. If you play a sport here, you influence your team. Uh, if you're an RA, you influence the people living in your building. Uh, if you're in choir, you influence the ensemble in some way. If you're a normal person who interacts with any single person ever on this campus, you influence them somehow. Uh, and it's how you choose to use that influence you have that makes you a positive or a negative leader. Um, our vision for everyone here is that we all become incredibly self-aware of where our circle of influence lies on this campus uh, and to really take an honest look at ourselves uh, to see if that influence is positive or negative. Are we being a positive leader or a negative leader? You might not think that you have influence on anyone, but that's just wrong. You do. The way you practice, uh, talk to your teammates, talk about your coach, your attitude, uh, that influences your team, regardless of if you're a captain or not. The way you make small talk with people around campus influences them. Like me publicly calling myself right now, uh, right now, on Monday, complaining all day about how hot and humid it was. That influences people in a negative way. Um, it's so so easy to do that. You can just if you just choose to make the conversation positive uh, and leave that person better off than you found them. That's what we're talking about when we say positive impact. You do not have to have a title or an office on this campus to make a difference. If you've heard that, I'm telling you that that is wrong. Of course, everybody here encourages you and wants you to step into a leadership role or position. Uh, because you'll grow as a person, it will add so much value to your experience here, you'll develop leadership skills, um, but you do not have to do that to make a difference on this campus. The way that you personally live your life and interact with other people, um, 
that can reach people in a way that maybe student government or any other leadership organization on this campus can't. Um, so realize that, become aware of where your impact lies, um, and use that to, in a positive way. You can make excuses about how you're not the leadership type, or you can make a positive difference in the people around you, but not both. And so I'm going to use this idea of embracing uh, your personal leadership to move on to one of our next big focuses for the year. We can't lead if we're not willing to serve. And I'm not standing up here saying that as the expert of leadership and service around here. Like, definitely not. Um, but more just a way of making student government accountable to you this year. We are committing ourselves to serving you, not just when it's convenient for us and we have some extra time laying around. Um, we're committing to serving you and to growing a culture of service on this campus that overflows into the community around us. Uh, when we first started talking about this last spring at our first meeting, um, we decided we really wanted to focus on the last part of York's mission statement. We've heard a lot about the first part, about the transformation that occurs here, uh, but we really wanted to focus on the last part, to equip students for lifelong service to God, family, and society. And we said, what better way is there to prepare yourself for a life of service than by serving? Um, the more you incorporate something into your daily life, the more of a natural habit it becomes. We all know that. Um, and I just, I don't see a way that you can live in lifelong service without making service part of your daily life now. Um, we've been hearing all the past week, and even just yesterday from Mrs. Sackwein, that the habits that we form while we're at York now are going to lay the foundation for our future. Um, and when we know that, we can't just as a student body say, well, one day we're going to serve others. Um, it's one of my goals when I have a career to make a point of serving others because I'll have more resources and more time and I'll have more money to give to others. Because that's, if we don't start now, we're probably not going to do it. Um, and so city government is working to bring those service opportunities to you this year. Uh, we're bringing them right to your front door. So every first Friday of the month, uh, we're going to be partnering with the East Hill Church to host um, a food drive out of the Lincoln uh, Food Bank at, uh, at East Hill. And so we're doing that the first Friday of every month. We're working on getting teams involved. But we're also working to bring one, one other opportunity per month as well. And you'll be hearing more about those in the coming weeks as they get planned out and solidified. But I want to take this opportunity to invite anybody who's interested to come talk to me or any of the student government officers about helping out our first food drive, which is going to be next Friday, September 7th. Uh, we can give you all the information about the times, uh, how long we'll need you to be there, uh, how many people we need, all that good stuff. Um, we want everyone on this campus to have the opportunity to serve this year, to be part of that, and we're working on bringing those opportunities to you. Um, our last big focus for this year is something that you've been hearing a lot about lately, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to talk about it again. I think every single person who has stood up here in the past week has had something to say about the community experience at York, and I think that in itself says something significant. There is a reason that you've been hearing it over and over and over again. The community here is not something that you want to miss out on. It's such a huge part of having a good experience here. And um, not too long ago, I heard a speaker say that you want your vision to be so big that you don't even want to say it because it's annoying and kind of unbelievable. But I'm going to say it anyways. I want every single person in this room to experience the community that York has to offer. For some of you, that might mean that you need to change your perspective a little bit. If you've decided right off the bat that this place isn't for you, you don't want to be part of any of it, constantly dwelling on the negative, you're not going to have a good experience here um, because you've already decided that you're not and nothing's going to change your mind. Um, and I challenge you to change your perspective a little bit, struggle and look at the positive. Um, yeah, York is a different place, we've established that by now, and there's so much good here, so many people who love you and care about you or want to see you succeed if you choose to look at that. And for others of you, it might not be so much of a perspective issue as much as a fear issue. Putting yourself out there and trying something new is actually terrifying. Um, it takes a lot of strength to be vulnerable um, and try something new and foreign that you've maybe never tried before. Um, but I want to tell you something. What you fear here 
will have mastery over your experience here. If you fear rejection, your entire experience at York will be defined by you avoiding trying anything new or developing any deep relationships for the fear of rejection. If you fear public speaking, that's me, my freshman year, uh, you'll avoid any opportunity that comes your way just because you might have to get up here and say something to the student body. Uh, I just want to encourage you to step through that fear, whatever it may be. It's difficult. No one likes being vulnerable. Um, but I promise you there's a community with open arms waiting for you, and there's a lot of people who are willing to walk by your side through that fear. I know it sounds really cheesy, like I was literally making fun of myself when I wrote this, but I'm serious. Just give the community here a chance. And so I'm just going to wrap up by asking all of the officers of student government this year to stand for just a minute while I say a few things about them. Um, so these are your people, you guys. They care so much about you and your experience here. They're constantly talking to me and to other people and to each other about ways that they want to improve your experience here. Just a few days ago, I talked with uh, several of them at the Ignite Excellence study event we had. Um, and I just was making conversation with them, asking them what their number one goal or vision was for, for us this year. And pretty much all of them said the same thing in different ways. They want to know all of you. They want to have relationships with you. They want everyone on this campus to feel included. They want you to feel comfortable coming up to them with your concerns and ideas. And they want you to know that your feedback and input will be heard and taken seriously. They want to serve you in the best way that they can. Uh, and you'll actually have the opportunity to hear from each of them personally in a couple weeks in chapel. But I just want you guys to become familiar with their faces sooner uh, rather than later. You guys can sit down now. Thank you. And so I spoke today, but like I said earlier, this message is really representative of what all of student government wants for you guys and for all of us this school year. Wherever you are at in life right now, we want to grow beside you in leadership and um, service to others and in community. Uh, these are the things that we have been thinking about, praying about, and working on since last spring. And we hope that you will come on board with us. Thank you.